Big news and more detail about City Skyline's next patch, 1.19, were released today in what is, unfortunately, the final weekly update, the word of the week update out of Colossal Order, and this patch will also be the final standalone patch. So, some new beginnings and some goodbyes to some old ways. Let's jump in and take a look at what Colossal Order are planning for City Skylines 2. Colossal Order start by setting the story, kind of framing the narrative, if you will, and in the introductory paragraph, they basically talk about how with City Skylines 1, they preferred an approach where the game would be patched alongside releases. Here we're specifically talking about paid DLC. The example that they give is the After Dark update to City Skylines 1, which had a free update, adding the day and night cycle for all players, and there was a DLC with those paid features specifically looking into things like nightlife. And that's the direction that City Skylines 2 is now going to take. The big revelation out of this then, leading in from that, is that this patch that's coming, patch 1.19, will be the final stand-alone patch. Their work to improve the quality of City Skylines 2, they say, will continue, including improvements to the base game and paid DLC. They talk about how they worked at a very fast pace when the game first came out, releasing sort of hotfix updates designed to be thrown out at the game to quickly fix issues. And of course, we saw many bug fixing patches as well that weren't so much hotfix updates, but rather just trying to solve some of the many problems. They say that patching the game in this way takes resources in of itself, and so they've adopted now a less frequent pace with more impactful updates and bigger additions. And therefore, the upcoming patch 1.0.19 will be the last standalone bug fixing patch, they say, for now, but I think given the kind of story that they're telling here, we should expect that there'll be very few of these moving forward and instead patches will be focused around the big releases for the game. We're going to return to finality and those broader changes around Colossal Order and CS2 in the later part of this video. Now I'd like to focus in on the patch itself. While the full patch notes won't be available until the patch is released, they really lent into the detail this week. The first key category are improvements to gameplay. And the main focus here is on land value, issue that could of course cripple a growing city. Land value will be affected by ground pollution. Ground pollution will first slowly reduce the land value increasing, and when pollution gets worse, it'll start to decrease the value. Land value won't decrease to zero, even on heavily polluted land, however. It'll increase according to industrial companies' profitability value. They say land value is likely to receive more love in future updates, more on that in future, and they've also improved the search for parking spaces. Will these improvements be enough to fix the land value issues, and will tying those issues to pollution be enough to solve the problem? I don't think so, but of course, we'll have to wait until we get it in our grubby little hands. Let's move through now and then and talk about the balancing work that they're doing. They say that balancing work for this patch has gone into the incineration plant, as the building extra incineration furnace upgrade would cause it to produce less electricity. The opposite effect, obviously, of what you would expect. Little tweaks were introduced to resources to avoid traffic jams at cargo stations as well. They say then there was the appropriate care put into youth, as teens and children required balancing for their spawn rates, and now more teens are entering high school to get educated. Go them. Of course, we can't talk about a patch in City Skylines 2 without also talking about performance. And they acknowledge those performance upgrades here too. No patch without some focus on performance is the promise. They say that this time they've optimized shadow culling, pathfinding scheduling, especially visible as faster and more stable simulation speed in very large cities. That is something that's good to at least hear. Uh, they've also added a cooldown to avoid too many queries on citizens seeking education when the city simply doesn't have enough schools. And finally, here on performance, they've reordered some rendering related systems to reduce waiting in the main thread. Will these improvements be enough to completely fix performance? Well, of course not. This is but one patch. I am looking forward to big cities running smoothly, though. I cannot tell you how slow it is to record some of the clips for these videos, depending on how large the city is, which city I'm in. My goodness, even on three speed, these things run, well, uh, fairly slowly. But speaking of fixes, last but not least, fixes are coming 
to the statistics panel. Multiple cases of random crashes crashing to the desktop when selecting move in on a household, for example, or maybe after modifying roads with citizen group at a specific rate, when modifying roads with pedestrian paths connected in a certain way, just to name a few. Those random crashes will all be fixed and they'll be adding some missing text and translations. That is the juicy detail about patch 1.19. They say it's coming soon. I imagine we'll expect it within the next week or two. The year is of course ticking on, moving into February soon. Time for an update for Cities 2. There is one more thing to cover in this sort of uh, weekly news update. Of course, we're talking about Colossal Order's Word of the Week. And here, going back to something we discussed a few weeks ago, they've decided to pull the pin on weekly updates. Now, previously they discussed it was due to feedback, uh, negativity, toxicity, attacks on the devs, everything ranging in that scale from from 1 to, well, I was going to say 1 to 10, but I don't, I don't know if it goes all the way to 10. Uh, nonetheless, they have pulled the plug. The devs at Colossal Order, they say, are fully focusing on improving City Skylines 2 further after patch 1.0.19 is out. They say actions speak louder than words. So, we'll pause these weekly posts and be back when we cover the content of the next patch release for the game. Keep following us on our socials and have a lovely week. That means that, of course, these videos will cease to exist as well. They're moving into a position where they're only going to provide updates when patches come out. So these kinds of discussions around what they're developing, how they're feeling, what kinds of things they're working on, and what they want to hear from us will no longer be a feature. Of course, in fairness though, they continue to reinforce that idea that they're looking for feedback, they still want to hear from us, and many of the improvements that we've talked about today were inspired by community feedback. So I'm not trying to suggest anything too nefarious here, trying to paint the picture from both sides. There is one other thing that they talked about inside of this update that I glossed over because I wanted to get to the juicy stuff about the patch first. And that's more broadly about their intentions, the patching process. I'm not sure how interesting it's gonna be to everybody, to be honest. That's why it's at the end of the video. But we're gonna talk through it nonetheless because I found it kind of interesting. They say that, of course, they're working to improve the quality of City Skylines 2. As we've discussed, this will be the last standalone patch. Next time, patches with bug fixes and all that kind of other stuff will accompany big feature updates, namely modding support, which, as we discussed last week, we can expect to roll out in beta branches effectively over the next half a year or so before it is fully published and out in full. At least that's the rough timeline they painted last week. Here they also talked a little bit about the patching process itself. Kind of a look behind the scenes, if you will. Uh, they say the patching process starts with the build version being locked in. No more changes. It then goes through at least one round of quality assurance, uh, where the listed issues are verified, fixed, still occurring. Any issues with that build will be reported. Any outstanding issues are fixed, and then a new one is locked in, which goes back to QA. That step takes maybe less than a week, maybe longer, depending on issues. Once they're happy with that version, including the submissions, it's ready to go out to the public. From there, it can take anywhere from a couple of days to a few weeks, depending on how big the patch is. And the release is always aimed so that it wouldn't be right before the weekend to make sure that if there are any issues, the dev team can work on them and not have to come in and work on a Saturday or something awful like that. So a little bit of a behind the scenes look there to conclude this week's update where really the headline features were those details about patch 1.19 and also the signaling of a few final things. It will be the final standalone patch, again the rest focused in and around those modding updates, and this will be the final weekly update from Colossal Order around the progress of Cities Skylines 2. Plenty to discuss, I'll join you in the comments section below and see you next time.